are going to be covering quite a lot of ground. We're going to be going to the House of Commons and the House of Lords, as well as the space we call the Royal Apartments. Um, we're going to start off with quite a big walk. started as a palace, as a palace of Westminster, um, for the kings and queens to live in, basically. So Edward the Confessor um, built here because it was right next door to Westminster Abbey, which was being built at that point. Mm. So he wanted to oversee the building of um, Westminster Abbey. The robing room is used for state occasions and, as the name suggests, it's also used by the Queen when she's preparing for state opening. So this is the room where the Queen puts on her imperial state crown and then proceeds from here into the House of Lords chamber. This is the Royal Gallery, and very much like the Prince's Chamber, it's an important working space for members of the House of Lords during sitting periods. Now, it's called the Royal Gallery due to the many paintings and sculptures of the monarchy that line the walls. It's also used for important state occasions. Now, the paintings around the walls are by William Dice, and they depict the five cardinal virtues, hospitality, generosity, mercy, religion, and courtesy. And they're represented here through the legend of King Arthur and his court. In the middle of the room are these two huge paintings by Daniel MacLeese, each recording important events from the Napoleonic Wars. The Prince's Chamber is a working anteroom that continues on to the House of Lords Chamber. Before and during a debate, members can confer in these rooms about the business of the House. Doorkeepers keep a tally of who comes in and who goes out of the room, as well as delivering messages to other members and escorting the Lord Speaker. This is um, a sort of Tudor theme room as well. We have the Tudor house is represented quite highly in these paintings, which were, um, there are 28 of them by um, Richard Burchett. And behind us we have probably the best known Tudor king, um, Henry VIII, and he's got all his wives. The angels have got solid gold hands and faces. If you look, they've got a different sort of tone to them to the rest of the to the rest of the gold. Um, the throne was designed by Augustus Pugin, as we talked about. It's really his masterpiece 
Um, and I think I could probably spend about half an hour talking about the throne and the canopy themselves, so I won't do that. Um, but suffice to say, you know, they're a pretty amazing um, thing. And this is where the Queen ends up doing the state opening of Parliament. We actually have another almost identical throne, slightly smaller, without the crown on the top, where um, it used to be Prince Philip sat, um, but now it, it's Prince Charles because Philip's retired from any sort of state. Mm -hmm. This is Central Lobby and as I mentioned obviously the whole building was, was redesigned in the 1840s and rebuilt and this was really built as a central point for the whole of Parliament. So we're right in between the House of Lords where we just come from and then the House of Commons where we're about to go now. Um, and if you have a look at this amazing stone vaulted okay. ceiling over the doorways are of the patron saints of the four constituent countries of the United Kingdom. Oh. So we have St Andrews oh, for Scotland, okay. um, St David for Wales, St Patrick at the time for Ireland, now for Northern Ireland, oh. um, and then St George for England. They've still got sort of bits knocked out of it and some scorch marks on the top of it, and that's kept there to remind the people here of what the country went through during the war. There's lots of discolor. Is that discoloring? Yeah, that would be the pollution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of discoloration from being in central London, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, when it comes uh, time to vote, the Speaker of the House of uh, Commons will say, um, all those in favour say aye, mm. all those against say no, and they'll all shout out, basically. Now, if it's not clear from that shout out, um, which side has won, which obviously it's often not, um, he will then call for a division. So he shouts, division, and uh, he rings a bell. Then a bell is rung throughout the whole of Parliament. So then the MPs have got eight minutes in order to get to one of these lobbies. So we're currently in the I lobby. So if they wanted to vote yes, they'd have to make their way to this lobby. Uh... If they want to vote no, they have to go to the one on the other side of the chamber, which is basically identical, just on the other side. Um, which is called the No Lobby. 